number 907 from the Song of Invitation. 907. And their actions. 
because a thankful person will appreciate every single thing that he or she has in their lives. Their kids, their marriage, their home, everything. And more importantly, salvation, of course. Hebrews 10, uh, Hebrews 8, 10, it reads, This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Even God's law is to be written in our hearts. Now, what happens when we do not feel our heart, when we do not feel our home, which is our heart? Well, remember the maxim, it reads, nature abhors a vacuum. This idiom is used to express the idea that empty or unfilled spaces are actually unnatural, as they go against the law of nature and physics. If we do not make the effort to fill our home with good things, to fill our heart, our mind with good things, then evil things are likely to return and with vengeance. Consider the example of the brethren in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11, it reads, And that is uh, what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. The brethren had been washed, had been sanctified, had been justified. Yet later, they were engaged in sinful conduct once again. Because in the second letter, it reads in 2 Corinthians 12, 21, I am afraid that when I come again, my God will humble me before you, and I will be grieved over many who have sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual sin, and the treachery in which they have indulged. In our case, our hearts can become hardened. Hebrews 3, verses 12 to 13, it reads, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, brethren and sisters, we can actually, if we don't uh, take care of this, if we don't fill our hearts with the goal, with the uh, with the word of God, we can reach the point where it becomes impossible to be renewed again to repentance and where we are crucifying again the Son of God and putting Him to open shame. Hebrews 6, 4 to 6, it reads, It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subject Him to public disgrace. So if this is what we can be doing if we don't fill our hearts with good things, in such case, how true the statement, the last day of that man or woman is worse than the first. How important it is then that we do not let the home of our heart remain empty and thus invite the worldly things to take up residence. Now, filling the home of your heart. We're, we just saw that we should fill it with good things, but how should we do it? That's the question. How? Well, we're just going to go through very simple steps. First of all, we should sanctify the Lord God in our hearts. First Peter 3, 15, it reads, But in your hearts, meaning in your minds, refer Christ as Lord. Also set a special place in your hearts for God as the ruler of your life. You know, we tend to like the term, Jesus is my Savior, 
but and also much the ruler. A ruler dictates how we ought to live, what we ought to do or not to do. He's our savior, but he should be also our ruler. We must regard Christ as a holy in our hearts. We must be selective as to what goes into our minds. Set your minds on things above, according to Colossians 3, 1 and 2. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let's follow the example of David. <coughs> Psalms 101, 3 and 4, it reads, I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part in it. The perverse of heart shall be far from me. I will, I will have nothing to do with what is evil. We should follow this example of David. Now, this does not mean that we should not be trying to save people. This, uh, this, this is our purpose here. But when the people does not want to hear the word of God, and actually it's going the other way around, that here they are trying to convince us that there is no God, that you shouldn't be listening to everything that they taught you in, that they teach you in the church, then we should turn to Psalms 101, 3 and 4. I hate what faithless people do. We do not hate the people. Of course, we love the people, but we should hate what faithless people do, their actions, not that the persons, and we should not have part in it, nothing at all. And we will not have to do with what is evil. Also Philippians 4 and 8, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is novel, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything, anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about that. You know, when I, when I came here to Oklahoma City, <coughs> and, uh, we turn up the, the radio when we uh, go into our work, and we come out with this uh, station. Uh, I think it is 89.9, K Caleb, I don't know if you know about that station. Okay, well, <coughs> and they, they have a challenge that if you hear Christian music for 30 days, then something uh, a good should uh, like um, should uh, change in your life. Well, I mean, that challenge is pretty awesome. Like, if you just hear the, the CDs, I mean, you guys have like a lot of CDs. Back in Mexico, we actually just have like one or two and that's it, right? Acapella music, of course. But like, if we do this challenge, maybe, you know, 30 days of just hearing Christian music, acapella music, church of praise music, I think that would be a positive thing, don't you think? Instead of hearing like just, I don't, I don't think that just hearing like music in the radio is wrong, but is it right? Is it pure what you're hearing? Is it lovely? Is it admirable what you're watching on the TV? The TV is not wrong, it's just what we watch, I mean, you know? What we hear, that's, that's a problem. So, Apostle Paul, it says, finally, you know, whatever is true, whatever is novel, whatever is right, whatever is pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about it. Dwell in your hearts, in your mind. Because that's how you're going to fill your heart. Sing at church. We love to sing at church. I mean, the harmony is awesome. I just said in front of Brother Glenn and Brother Rima, awesome voices, like, Great. But she, we should sing also at home, in our car. Sing alone and with others. If you have kids, the kids are going to see this. And they're going to know about this. And they're going to learn that you're singing not because you have to sing, but because you love to praise God in your home, in your car. It's, it's really awesome. Be selective about, about what you watch on television in the movies. We just talked about that. Choose your books, magazine, etc. very carefully. You know, it was really interesting in one young preach meeting in Mexico that I, I gave a lesson about reading the Bible. And it was surprising to me that 
that the young people said that, well, not all of them, of course, but some of them were saying, well, the Bible is like a big book. I cannot read it all because it's so big. And at that time, Da Vinci's Code book just came out. It was a really, it's not an easy book to read. Like, like it's not a, 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 a little book, you know, it has a lot of pages on it. And they were reading that book. And you know what Da Vinci Code talks about, right? And I was like, well, I mean, it's not a really wise decision to do. We, sh we should choose our books to read our magazines. Whatever is in the newspaper, we should, you know, dissect whatever we, we read. Should also, we, choose your, uh, we should choose our friends very carefully. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. It doesn't matter if you repent. It doesn't matter if you want to change. If you don't change your friends around you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It says, do not be misled. It's not going to happen. They will either help you to be strong or hinder your efforts. Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. It's an easy thing text to remember, but we should practice it also. In conclusion, that's it, right? It's really small lesson. What is the condition of your home? What is the condition of our home, our heart? Are you feeling your home, things that are good? If you're doing so, congrats. If you think that you're not doing so, then you have an opportunity as Christians to pray for each other. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We're like, we are like family, even better than family, because we're the family of the Lord, of God, of Jesus Christ. And we should pray for one another. So if you're not doing so, you have the opportunity while we stand and sing the song of invitation. Lord, the gentle voice of Jesus.